was late June 2020. Fresh City, the urban farm and organic grocery company I had founded, had its best sales quarter ever. With the onset of the lockdown, demand for our delivery service went through the roof. Driving through deserted city streets, our drivers delivered thousands of orders all over the city. Grateful customers scribbled handwritten notes of thanks and tucked them into Ziploc bags. We had persevered during a very challenging time. And yet, I felt defeated. With the pandemic still raging on and protesters in the streets demanding racial equality, the big grocers all withdrew their coronavirus premium pay. In my heart, I knew what that meant. We would have to withdraw our own $2 per hour top up we'd been paying our staff during the pandemic. I just couldn't see a way to make the numbers work. We wouldn't be able to institute a higher wage without increasing prices and then losing customers to the big guys. I asked myself, what was the point of starting an impact-focused business if I couldn't even pay my staff a living wage during the greatest public health crisis of the century? But then I realized the truth. The price of food is not right. I cannot afford to pay all my staff a living wage with prices where they are. You, me, us, will all need to pay more for food. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, this guy's a grocery executive. Of course he wants me to pay more for food. But hold on, hear me out. A decade prior, I arrived in New York City to practice investment law. At the time, every person with a pulse in the United States of America could get a mortgage. Bankers and lawyers made a killing bundling these mortgages together and selling them off. Until quite suddenly, the music stopped. Almost overnight, $19 trillion of household wealth evaporated as housing prices plunged. Around that time, I started reading about food. Now, this may seem obvious to you, but the 8 billion of us here on Earth, we depend on a few top inches of topsoil, in the right climate, in the hands of the right farmer, in order to eat every day. Literally half the land on Earth is used for food production. And what I was reading felt eerily familiar. Even though supermarkets boasted a bounty of food from all over the world, and food conglomerates were raking in billions, all was not well. What you have to appreciate is that food today is historically cheap. We spend just 8% of our incomes on food. Our grandparents spent a quarter. Some of the reason food is cheap is because of great innovations, things like irrigation, plant breeding, or mechanization. But some of the reason food is cheap today is because of reasons that are much harder to swallow. Things like paltry wages at the farm, job insecurity up and down the food chain, cruelty to animals at an immense level, and environmental degradation at a planetary scale. These innovations seem cheap in the short run, but they're gonna cost us in the long run. Just like the financial crisis, the bill will come due. At the time, I thought, you can tackle these issues. We just need to care. I, an investment lawyer with zero experience in food or farming, would start an urban farm in my hometown of Toronto. And the truth is, the decade since has shown me, caring does make a difference. We've done great things like put salads and meals in glass jars and deliver them to our customers so those jars can be reused. We've extended health and dental benefits to all of our staff. We hire staff on payroll rather than using temp agencies. We source as locally as we possibly can. And we source exclusively 100% grass-fed beef, which is better for the animal, better for the environment, and better for your health. While we're not perfect, we've definitely moved the ball forward now with eight stores, thousands of deliveries, and a humming commissary kitchen. But what got me on that day in June was that after all these years of trying, all these years of caring, we still weren't able to pay all of our staff a living wage. I felt that I had let down my staff and that I had let down a lot of the people that were rooting for us. But the truth is, a just food system cannot be based on cheap food. We've entered into an implicit bargain with the food system. We've essentially said, 
Hey, Miss Grocer. Hey, Mr. Big Box Store. You get us cheap food. And as long as it doesn't make us sick right away, we'll just look the other way. So you walk into that store and you see an $8 rotisserie chicken. Great deal, right? $8 and you're halfway to dinner for several people. But what was the true cost of that $8 chicken? It means chickens confined to an eight and a half by 11 space for their whole lives. Chickens debeaked at birth. Chickens pumped full of antibiotics just so they can survive these hostile conditions. It means paltry wages from that processing plant all the way to the checkout counter. The true cost of that chicken is far more than $8. Have you had a tomato this week? The farmer that cokes that tomato out of the ground, she doesn't own that land. She's not even a citizen of the country on which that land sits. She makes low wages, works long hours, and has no job security. At Fresh City, we have a good sense of how labor is treated at the farms from which we source, because they're local. But in the winter, when we're buying certified organic tomatoes from Florida, we have much less sense if we want things like a living wage, a cleaner environment, and humane treatment of animals, we're all going to have to pay more for food. The tragedy of it is we can afford it. Countries not that dissimilar from us, countries like Japan or France or Holland, spend up to 50% more on food than we do. And that's not even to talk about the immense amount of food waste in our system. We Canadians are amongst the world's worst culprits when it comes to food waste. Your compost bin could essentially be an ATM with the thousands of dollars you throw away into it every year. What about those less fortunate who cannot afford food even at today's prices? Won't a higher price of food make it even worse for them? The sad truth is that today, 100,000 people in Toronto will go out to work, put in a good day's work, and still not be able to afford the basic necessities of life. That's not a price of food problem. That's an inequality problem. So what do we do about cheap food? First, we can act as consumers, exerting power through the marketplace. You can do things like buy more local, more organic, buy less meat, buy better quality meat. But the reality of it is we're not going to end cheap food simply by shopping at a farmer's market or with Fresh City, for that matter. We need to make a shift from acting as consumers to acting as citizens. Citizens change the very nature of the marketplace by changing the rules of the game. How do you do that? You challenge power wherever it resides. You talk to the most powerful people you know, politicians, school trustees who control our cafeterias, grocery executives. If you're a kid, talk to your parents, talk to your teacher, and tell them two things. First, tell them that we have to increase minimum wage and end the shoddy way we treat migrant laborers in this country. I want to pay my staff a living wage, but I can't do that as long as the big grocers and other retailers don't match that wage. I'd go out of business pretty quickly. Government needs to step in and set some standards. The second thing we need to tell these powerful people is that we have to end the factory farming of animals. There is simply no nutritional reason for eating as many animal products and meat as we do today. Government needs to regulate the humane treatment of animals. Animal factory farming is a moral stain on our country and our generation. What seems cheap individually is killing us collectively. We're not getting value for money. For people and for planet, we all need to pay more for food.